So this is a General Electric ES44 AC locomotive. And as you can see, it's in the Union Pacific paint scheme. And because of that, they like to call their locomotives C45ACCTEs. And that's just a fancy way of saying it's a General Electric GVO. GVOs are basically a combination of the words General Electric and Evolution. As you can see, the running number is 5553. And on the nose, you can see the typical Union Pacific logo. The hand railings are also separately applied, and the ones that are on the nose of the locomotive are also separately colored as well, being white. As you can see, the number 5553 is very legible. There are a bunch of smaller warning labels on the sides of the locomotive. These are also very legible. There is a typical Union Pacific flag, which you can see on most UP locomotives today, as well as the Building America slogan, which Union Pacific uses. Towards the rear of the locomotive, there is this big grill which houses the dynamic brake fan as well as the radiator fans. And here is the brake wheel which is on the left side of most General Electric locomotives that I know of. EMD has them on the right. Now I'm sure you're probably wondering, don't you have another one of these somewhere in your layout? The answer is yes and no. They are kind of in the same livery or paint scheme, but as you can see, they're completely different in terms of build. As you can see on the right is Union Pacific's SD70 Ace, or really this is their AH model, which basically means it's a heavy model. As you can see by how the nose design looks, this one right here on the left, which is the General Electric version, is more so pointed. Well, there's a slight rectangular box right here on the SD70s. As you can see, each locomotive has their different running number, as well as horns being at different height levels, UP's SD70As being higher. The fans on the rear are exposed in the SD70As, and the GEO has its fans covered up. I did get myself another General Electric P42 because this one is in phase 5 and it's number 169. The reason why I got this is because 160, which I also own in phase 5 paint, recently got repainted as a Pepsi paint or Amtrak's phase 3. The top has minimal detailing and no warning labels unlike 150. And as you can see on the bottom, it has minimal detailing as well aside from sand containers and fuel tanks. And the wheels are slightly blackened on this one. I'm not sure if you can see it that well, but they are blackened, which I guess could improve on traction, I guess. Looking at the front, you can kind of see some details that I put in myself. As you can see, I put in the running number, which is 169, as well as a glass cover to cover the headlamps. There are MU hoses which go towards the couplers of the locomotive, MU standing for multiple units, so I could basically run multiple locomotives together. And as you would assume, this would mean a more powerful train. I only now notice this while filming this video, but there are windshield wipers in the cab windows, so I guess that's a bonus. Moving to the side, you could kind of see a few other details of the locomotive. You have what is the General Electric logo, being their manufacturer, as well as F printed on the side of the cab, which usually indicates that it's the front of the locomotive. The fuel cap is molded in, so as you can see, it, it's not really any separate detailing, but rather it's just molded in without any other coloring. You can see on the back there is number, the running number, which is 169, as well as a door to the rear. Turning this to the, to the rear, you can see that there are marker lights and a separate set of headlights. Looking on the back, you can kind of see 169, which is basically the running number again. You see a door which goes to whatever consist is on it. As well, there's little hatches right here for loading in sand, which is pretty much necessary if you're going to be running long trains. The ditch lights on here do exist, but it has non-working ditch lights. The MU hoses, which are on the bottom right here, again, like on the front, 
they're used for multiple unit running and these ones are kind of more bent so if you do assemble those keep in mind they they bend towards the center Now as you can see right here, this is Amtrak's newer locomotive. This is their Siemens ALC42 Charger locomotive. As you can see, it has the locomotive type ALC42 written right next to the F, which indicates that this is the forward portion of the locomotive. You have the running number again, which is 302 on this one. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but on the wheels, you can actually see little indents in the wheels, which is actually a really nice detailing. It has roller bearings equipped on each axle and there's less of a ladder going up to the cab. There's again a molded in cab door and step ladders. And on the front, there's different detailings compared to the P42. As you can see, this one has a lot more smoother sloped cab windows, which is not what you see on the P42. The headlamps on this one have a bit more of a angular shape slash, I guess, um, like a sharper look to it, which basically gives the front of it a more aggressive appearance. You have the running numbers on top of each cap window, number 302, and you can basically see the, the five chime air horn, which is the K5LA, which is manufactured by Nathan. Going towards the rear, you can kind of see what looks to be almost like a red arrow. And this originally came from Amtrak's Phase 1 livery or paint scheme, which was seen on a lot of their SDP-40S or early F40 pages. But there's also one P42, which runs out there, number 161, which still carries the heritage paint scheme for Phase 1. On the back, you have the running numbers again, number 302 on each side. And then again, you have dish lights in the rear of the locomotive, which of course do not work. There's more MU hoses right next to the couplers. And then you have the Amtrak logo, which sits on the door of the locomotive. So these are the passenger cars that come with the ALC42. You get running numbers 34055, 31021, and 32052. 32052 is a sleeper car. And you can kind of see how the interior looks in the, in the top floor. The way you can tell a sleeper car from a regular coach car is mostly from the windows. If you look on the sleeper car, there is an extra window at the lower floor, while the regular coach car does not have that. There's also different interiors in the coach and sleeper. Now, if you were to actually get a coach with a coach baggage, you could probably see that the lower windows in this one are different as well. The coach package actually has boarded up windows where the coach would have its regular windows. And then the middle set of windows is actually replaced by this baggage door. Now the end of each car is pretty much identical. You get your non-working ditch lights, but you could make them work just by adding an electrical system into each car. There's a cutout of a window, which is, again, separately applied, since you could, like, have a separate glass set which goes in each car. The diaphragm is also put on separately. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but there are actually little buttons right there on the door. Which are actually on the actual prototypes if you want to walk from car to car. And what these do is these actually automatically open up the end doors of each passenger car.